after the November elections, when President Trump defeats the cultural Marxist Democratic Party and is not impeached, I will be spending, you know, 80% of my time in Europe in preparation for the European parliamentary elections. That was U.S. President Donald Trump's former chief strategist, Steve Bannon. Welcome back. We're talking about Bannon's influence on European politics. Let's get back to our panel. Federica, to what extent is what is happening in Europe right now with the emergence of these right-wing parties, to what extent is it about economic nationalism, about these countries looking after their own interests? Oh, it's definitely, it's definitely economic nationalism. Yeah. It's when, when things are going well, when the economy is, is running up well, nobody really complains about, uh, about coming, people coming in, actually. It's, it's the other way around. It's all about the economy. The problem is that Europe is only partially recovered from the crisis, uh, the southern countries, which are the one which receive more immigrants, are the one which have recovered less. Uh, and so the, the, the two things get, get confused. There is resentment. And I'm not saying that this is good, but there is resentment. So the two things go together. So the question is not only how to help the immigrants in the sense that how to stop the influx, which, by the way, as Western world, right. we have created with the words, but also how to help the, the European countries which are behind economically to, I mean, to thrive once again. This is the two main, the main issues. And again, I think that by doing it together, mm. we are stronger than by doing it each country by, by its own. And what is your view on this? Has Steve Bannon managed to tap into this sort of vein of deep resentment in Europe because of the economies there? Yeah, I mean, he didn't create the vein of deep resentment, but he is, has identified it as part of his, uh, you know, his own value system, and he wants to take advantage of it, uh, just as he did here in the United States. I think it's interesting that uh, Steve Bannon talks about, um, you know, uh, countries where there are, uh, you know, legal uh, people, people who are elected officials, you know, public policy folks, and the real people, the real country, and we see this in the United States, and we see this so-called dichotomy in Europe as well uh, in, in terms of the way he describes it. And I think that's a false dichotomy. Mm. In democracies, our leaders are our elected representatives. They are accountable to us. They are, in fact, us. I don't think that there is this dichotomy that he, that he is uh, putting forth. And the other aspect of this is actually migration of refugees, uh, whether they're economic refugees or refugees fleeing uh, actual war in Syria and other places is down drastically in the EU. And, you know, a country like Hungary, where Viktor Orban is vehemently anti-migration and, and anti-refugees, barely has any Muslim refugees at all. So I think the question is not a question of the reality on the ground. It's the question of what is our national identity, and that is being fed by economic insecurity, which is something that Steve Bannon thrives on, to really take uh, these, these uh, disaffected and alienated people uh, who, who have some real economic grievances and, t and um, takes their economic grievances against others, often people who have way less power and resources in their own societies. Ingrid, we're hearing that Steve Bannon has, as you've just heard, support among, as Hind called them, disaffected, alienated people. But I'm wondering how, uh, how great is his support, even among far-right parties in Europe, for instance, in Sweden? One of the Swedish Democrats said he is of no interest to us. Uh, so he may be popular in some places, mm. but he's actually rejected in other places, isn't he? I think, yeah, but I think uh, the Sweden Democrats, they are not a very um, brave party. They've tried very much to be politically correct them too, because all the other parties, because Swedes love politically correct people, I guess. Uh, but there is another party, a new party called um, uh, Alternative for Sweden, and they are very much interested in having contact with Steve Bannon, I assure you. And I think that most Swedes have never heard about the movement yet. It is very new to us, but I, I really hope that you know we have something going on in Europe now and it's I mean you talk about these like 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 they are they're all fleeing from war and they, they have no other options even the Swedish Prime Minister said that he he now accepts that most of those who come are not refugees they're just people who want to have a better life 
And we have done this for so many years, taken in so many people. And you know, Sweden is a high-tech country. We don't even have these easy jobs anymore. So all these people that come to our country, they have to live off welfare. And it's we, the Swedish taxpayers, who have to pay for them year after year. And now people are getting fed up with this and say, you are ruining our country and you want us to pay for it too. Crossing the med the way these people are doing and risking their life, you don't do it unless you're seriously motivated. And this is are they migration. Risking their lives? Are eh? they risking their lives? Well, I mean, oh, yes, they on those are. Boats, on those boats, yes, they yeah. are. Very much, very much so. Very much so. If I may, if I may interject here, I yeah. had the opportunity to visit Sweden several times. It's a very beautiful country. And while I was there the last time, I actually met uh, people who had been refugees in the 90s from Somalia. And I met uh, one couple. The, the husband is an engineer. His wife is a social worker. And what they said was, yes, when they came to Sweden as young children with their parents, and yes, it was a life-threatening journey to come from Somalia to Sweden, uh, they, yes, they did receive welfare. Yes, they benefited from uh, the wonderful opportunities offered by the Swedish state. They went to university. They're able to start a family. And guess what? They're paying it back. They're paying it forward today. They also pay taxes. They also yeah. support this, 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 the welfare system. Okay, Roland, go ahead. Well, I totally agree with Ingrid. Uh, the migrants uh, can't read and write, and uh, they cannot help a modern and industrialized uh, economy. Uh, as a matter of fact, German industry is for migration because they want cheap labor force, or at least to have millions of uh, unemployed people to lower wages in Germany. This is a matter of fact. And so uh, the social costs are enormous. So they are counted up to 400 billion euros at the moment uh, level of migration. Uh, and uh, this uh, will ruin the social security system in Germany for sure. Many of them have already jobs, so mm -hmm. they are very bad, badly paid jobs, and they cannot uh, help their living and the living of their great families. Is that what it's about, Frederica, cheap labor? Uh, no, I don't think it's about cheap labor. And by the way, Merkel was very, you know, very attentive in picking on the skilled, on the skilled, uh, um, on the skilled Syrians, doctors, and so on. They're, they're, professions like nurses that we don't have enough in Europe yeah. and we're picking on, 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 on other countries. But right. it's, if you think about it, these are, as, uh, as my colleague from, uh, from Chicago said before, yeah. at the beginning, is, yes, it is a cost. But right. then it's a cost that get, gives back. Think about uh, Eastern Germany. You are German, you were there when, when uh, Germany united. At the beginning, it was a cost. It was a cost on Germany and, as a consequence, on the rest of Europe. Because, mm -hmm. because the people were raised in a different kind of economy, they were not efficient enough and not productive right. enough, right. the whole economy had to be restructured. It did cost money. But after a transition period, it started contributing again. Okay. So it's, it's an investment. And I don't see anything wrong mm -hmm. with people trying to have a better <laughs> life. This has happened since, una unanimity, uh, una uh, is since a human being exists. Okay. moving for a better life. Right. Roland, Europeans, of course, will have a chance to express their views, their yeah. sentiments, next year at European parliamentary elections. And a lot of Steve Bannon's energy, a lot of, about his movement, which he's established in Brussels right now, is about getting more uh, members from the far right into the European Parliament. He's talking about at least one third. But not everybody is agreeing with what Steve Bannon is saying. In fact, uh, Someone at France's National Rally Party said Bannon is an American and has no place in, Europe, in, in any European political party. Uh, what do you make of that? Are they right? Is, is Bannon an outsider trying to exploit things in Europe? Well, as a matter of fact, he is an outsider and does, does, doesn't understand what's going on. But uh, he will have some impact because his, 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 his tremendous force in campaigning uh, could help those uh, populist parties and will help them. But uh, the reason is not, uh, when they succeed, is not Steve Bannon, but is the politics behind and is uh, the misunderstanding of the European bureaucracy what's happening in Europe for the people, for the lower people, for the lower class people. Okay. 
you know, very quickly. The, the campaigning, the kind of American campaigning doesn't really work in, in Europe. I mean, one spectacular case was Italy. With, there was a referendum on, on, the change, on the constitutional changes. Yeah. They employed uh, a very well-known American strategist. It spectacularly failed. Americans are generally not able to understand the nuances in Europe. Right. So just bringing what he did with Trump with Europe is likely not going to work That's in not Europe. Work. Okay, we're going to have to leave it there. Thanks to all of you for being with us. That's it for this edition of The Heat. I'm Arnand Naidu in Washington, D.C. Thanks for being with us.